All right, we're going to take a look at antennas for digital signaling as they are used for automated information systems. The AIS systems uh, are now in a Class A mandated for all large vessels, which they call 300 tons and up, or any commercial v vessel that is transporting for hire. The recreational vehicles, uh, vessels that are, I do believe it's 35 feet and up, require a Class B AIS system. It is not absolutely mandated yet, but it probably will be. The only difference between a Class A and a Class B is two minor items. Class A is always prioritized because it is a mandated function. Class B will be looked at when it has time. And Class A transmits at 12 and a half watts. Class B transmits at two watts. But they both transmit and receive data in what used to be a primary cell phone format called TDMA, okay, which is a, a time domain multiplexing. However, they both do the same thing. They both need an antenna that's going to operate in the same fashion. The, uh, we build antennas that are both uh, usable for broadbands of frequency and specifically AIS antennas that are tuned specifically to the AIS band. The AIS band most transmitters that are used on that are very sensitive to any VSWR that's coming off. Again, this goes back as we talked about digital signals being used for other things on VHF. The AIS certainly sits in the VHF range. It sits at the top of it, the 162 megahertz range. And it has a requirement for extremely clear data movement. So when we look at the way TDMA is done and whatnot, we do build a specific for optimum operation for somebody that's going to be doing class A probably. And for class B, for pleasure boats, for any of the stuff you're going to use on your own, there's a great difference in price between the two systems. So in the AIS, for pleasure boats, we can look at using a single antenna that is fed by a splitter that can now hook to VHF communications radio and your AIS information system. The advantage of doing this is that we have one antenna for us, we call it a 992. It is a wide band. It covers the entirety of the marine VHF band and the AIS band. So we don't mistune when we go outside like a normal VHF antenna does not typically cover the 162 megahertz area where AIS is handled. If we do it this way, these um, splitters, if you will, um, are a, a, an active device. The only, if they're used normally, an AIS, a Class B, one does not transmit nearly as often as a Class A and actually will reduce its transmissions if Class A's are busy in the area. So again, this is specifically for recreational boating. You will receive signals from the Class A's so that you know where these other boats are. You know if a ship is about to run you down. But yours may not be transmitting to him, and that's where you have to be concerned. Yours doesn't transmit unless it has to. This splitter will make a single 992 antenna work for both of these. One drawback is that whenever one is active transmitting, the other cannot be. 
This splitter is more a switch than a splitter. It will hook one radio or the other up during transmit. This antenna will cover both of those functions. I don't recommend this for large boats. Okay, large boats, this AIS system, if they're on Class A, running 162, it needs its own antenna. It's busy all the time. It's transmitting every two to four seconds. AIS may not transmit for 10 minutes, so the VHF is going to work fine. But that's the difference between Class A and B. I thank you for having listened to any of my little tutorials here. I was trying to keep them pretty basic. We intend to do some more involved tutorials in the near future. And I would be happy to answer any questions um, that you have. If you can send them in, please send them to support at digitalantenna.com. And again, signing off, this is Dr. John Jones, and my PhD is in electrical engineering and physics. Thank you.